Welcome to the Divorce Dad Playbook Podcast. Scott, it's been a while. How how are you? I'm doing great, Daniel. Um, by the way, before we start, I just want to get right to the theme song because we have a lot to talk about today. Um, I don't know why this song came into my head this weekend. Well, actually, I do know why, but we'll play it first. And me vice. So there's a reason, Scott, why this song may have come into my uh do you want to know why? Because I was in because, Miami. Uh, no, oh, you were in Miami? Because I was going to say, um, if you can look for people who are watching on YouTube right here over my shoulder, I got, we got a new record player. Kids and I got a new record player. And um, I have this gem, Philip Michael Thomas's first album on vinyl. It's about as good as you would imagine. He's got a third eye. I imagine it's not very good. Tubs. Now all I need is, uh, and by the way, he has one, Don Johnson's album, and I will have the full Crockett and Tubbs album theme song. Oh, I just threw that. That probably cracked in half. Um, so it got me thinking, Scott, about um, how uh, a lot of actors who go on to do music are laughed at. Michael C. Hall, uh, who has was Dexter and did an interview the other day because he's got a band now and he was like you know people don't really take actors seriously who go into music but they take musicians seriously who go into acting and that made me think who's probably the most famous musician who went into acting and it's a local guy I thought uh, uh, yeah, yeah Fresh Prince right, he's like, yeah, local guy for us and I was thinking like what's the best song to play what would be an appropriate winter song to like get people excited summertime you know to get people excited but then I thought Maybe this was a little better. Oh, my. <laughs> you're, really, you're really pushing hard on this Miami theme, huh? And then I was like, all right, you know, Will Smith, welcome to Miami, right? And then I was like, well, they, they talk in Spanish. You remember the, the, the jump? It's like being Benito in Miami. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, this is, first of all, this is an amazing song. So I just, we should just let this play out the rest of the show. Oh my God, I'm so excited. But then I thought like, you know, all right, let, let's get a little more multicultural, right? So let's not just keep it to Will Smith. Let's see if they do this part here. Here we go. And I don't know if you noticed that, but that was Eva Mendez, by the way, in that video. Um, so that was like, well, bienvenido a Miami. I was like, well, who else speaks Spanish in Miami? And I was like, oh, right, okay. There's Gloria Stefan. And, and the Miami sound machine. This is not my Miami trip, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. From what I hear, it was probably pretty close to that, Scott, because did you know that you left me a butt dial voicemail while you were down there? I don't know if you knew this. Yeah, I have a recording of it. This is a butt dial voicemail that you sent me when you were down in Miami. Yeah. Let's get it popping. I'm in Miami Beach, drink all day. It was an Play interesting night for you. Let's get it popping. I'm in Miami Beach. Everybody on So you went to Miami, huh? Yeah. How was your weekend? Um that was a what lot of music to start off with. What is a lot of playing? Can I, can I, can I, before we get to your, uh, I just oh. want to say one more thing. I did get a lot of vinyl this week. I went to New Hope on a, I went out with a woman in, in New Hope, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour, but worth it. Cause it's like hipster central. I got a lot of vinyl. Look, Tina Turner, private dancer. I was going to sing that for you, but I won't. Um, please, this is perfect don't. for me. Paul Simon still crazy after all these years. I think it's like my theme song right there. Um, <laughs> We got a three dog night, joy to the world. Did you know, Scott, that, you know, joy to the world, three dog night, bunch of white guys. Did you know that? I didn't know that they're white guys. Yes. I did know that. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Yeah. I didn't know he was a white bullfrog. Yes. But well, it was a white guy singing it, but yeah. Coup, the coup de grace that, that pays off a, a, a thing for our audience. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, if not, uh, if you're uh, listening to it, I will explain to this is the color of money soundtrack. Which, by the way, featuring Don Henley, Robert Palmer, Eric Clapton, Mark Knopfler, who's from uh, Dire Straits, uh, Willie Nixon, B.B. King, and Warren Zevon. This might be the greatest soundtrack of all time to the greatest movie of all time. And I got it for five dollars. Sounds like you had a great. It sounds like you had a great weekend. Was that part of the weekend? 
Yes, that was part of the weekend. And by the way, I did have a great weekend and we can talk a little bit about that, but I want to get to your weekend now because um, we haven't done a show in a week because the other day you said, I'm going to be in Miami and then you just stayed forever. You just like never came back. Are you still there? Uh, clearly I'm home. Uh, it snowed and it was very icy as I was coming back yesterday. Uh, I did go to Miami and stay a little bit longer because I, I can and the weather down there <laughs> is amazing. It's amazing. I don't I, like. I don't know about the South Beach scene for me. I'm sure that works for a lot of people. It, it was definitely a little bit crazier than I would liked it to be during COVID. Did time. you hang out with LFMAO? Is that no? Uh, but I did appreciate the fact that it was like 78 and sunny most of the time, which was just glorious. Okay, so let me ask you a parenting question because obviously, you know, we're divorced dads and we talk about that kind of stuff before we get into just the what, what happened uh, and how being in Miami for a weekend compares to being in, for me, New Jersey and New Hope, Pennsylvania for a weekend. Because there are, there are some interesting sort of logistical things that I think we want to talk about. Um, you are dealing right now with a situation that a lot of parents and a lot of single parents are dealing with at this time of year uh, and that's college decisions for your seniors in high school. Yeah. You had previously gone to Florida. You, we mentioned this on the show to look at schools um, with your oldest. And then you went to a city that he had previously been to as well. Do you want him to go to Florida for school? Because he's not going to stay local. So you want him to at least go to like a warm weather climate that you can get like a timeshare and hang out. Or, or would you rather him be closer where it's a drive and not a flight? <laughs> Well, I know things about the timeshare for me. Uh, I uh, he has to get in, so you know I'm not I'm not I'm not a big jinxer. But if well, he gets into there's a more than Florida one school in Florida, school, yeah, yeah. Well, there's two that he's applying to. Uh, if he gets into a Florida school, I want it to be his choice, but I would strongly recommend to him that he spends his September through May in Florida in school as opposed to anywhere else i don't need him to drive it, it by the time he drove to some of the schools that he got into it would he'd already be in miami it's like it's like two and a, it's like two hours and 15 minutes to fly down there it's crazy if you're not like or, me or, mechanic, to be on on a plane right now but yeah i mean uh tell i give a shout out to delta they're, they're they do it right like they leave some of the seats open and and you know it's pretty orderly right. like like the people are pretty good they're not jamming jamming those planes and uh it's yes i would love method. i would love for for jack to have the option to choose to go to school in warmer weather i just think that when you grow up in a certain area like and you have four years to t test things out before you really land where you're going to land and you've been largely in the same place for your entire life you got to take advantage of the opportunity to experience somewhere somewhere else. And I think, I think I'm not saying Miami specifically, I'm just saying Florida, the what you can't beat the weather during September to May. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be there in the summer necessarily, but you can't beat it. This is something I want to throw out. I know obviously our audience, a lot of people are, are in a similar situation to you. I know a lot of people reach out to you. So I, I would like to, throw that out to them. I'm uh, Dan at divorcedadplaybook.com. Scott, you're Scott at divorcedadplaybook. And probably the best way to get to all of us, both of us is uh, maybe through Instagram, I would think at this point, um, at divorcedadplaybook is our, the shows, you know, in the, in the sites, Instagram. But I want to get people's thoughts on this because it's different for you a little bit, Scott, because your outlaws are in Florida. So if, if your kid goes to Florida, he's actually closer to family uh, in some respects than, than others. Um, yeah, that has no bearing on the decision. They're old. I mean, it's okay. No, no, no. But but I'm saying like if if your uh, ex wife wants to go down, she could double dip, and you know she's not that far. My point is for people who are in a situation similar to yours, but their child is not going uh, to a place where there's other family, where it's just I want to get away from here. I want to go to the Midwest. I want to go to UCLA or something like that. If you're on the East Coast, how do you deal with that when you're a parent? And that's the question I want to throw out. And, I, and it's a little bit same for you because there's other schools that he's looking at. If you're gung ho about, oh, I want him to get into this school, but your spouse is like, I don't know if we can afford that school, or I don't know if we want him that far away. How do you, you know, do you leave it up to the kid? It's an interesting conversation that I obviously have have not don't have to worry about for four more years. No, I I think it's hopefully, 
and I know a lot of people are not in the same situation. I don't know many people that can afford college, no matter where it is. Like it's expensive, and so True. unless you, unless you had had parents slash their grandparents, you know, put money away and 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 put college funds away, et cetera, where you're really diligent on saving, the cost of college is out of control. So I think that the cost has to be a factor when you're talking about it. But hopefully, you're in a position where where it can be largely up to the kid, where it is in our situation too. Sometimes I just think you apply to enough schools that it sort of shakes its way out also because UCLA is a school that Jack has applied oh, to. Is it? Yeah, well, because back in the day, uh, I was spending a lot of time in LA. So that would have been awesome for all of us. And, and again, the only thing better than, than Florida for college, I think weather-wise is possibly LA. Sure, um, sure. or Southern California. So if you're going to look, you got to look. And and I just think, so I think, first of all, going to school, I don't think that you should be, I, I don't think that you should be restricted to, um, to, to distance. I really don't because the reality is it, 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 and we know this with, with Paul, like Paul went to a driving away college, but it still took like six or seven hours to get there. True. Right? Yeah. And yeah, there's so, no flights to Ithaca, New York. And there's no flights really. to Ithaca. So, so to me, and this is something that my ex and I have talked about, and I think she was probably a little bit more comfortable with, with Jack looking at closer schools because it's drivable. God forbid something happens. But to be honest, I fly so much or I used to fly so much. If something happens, I, I hop on a flight and I'm, and I'm there just as quickly, like as I would be driving. So I mean, I don't think that the distance thing is an issue. I do think back to your question that that it's a conversation, hopefully, amongst all parties that are sharing in the decision and and potentially the cost yeah. to yeah. decide wh where where they should go and what's best for them. And and you know, oftentimes kids get kids get swept up in the fact that oh, my two buddies from high school are going to this school, so I need to go there, and that's a terrible idea, terrible idea. It's just things change and and you need to expand your horizons. I'm just a big believer in the, it's a big world and you need to, if you have four years, you can experience college somewhere where you didn't grow up in a bubble. I, um, we don't need to get into my, people know my college affiliation right here. Um, and it's pretty well known um, where I went and then worked for. Uh, for a very long time in my life, I th let's spin this back to sort of what what I was doing all weekend and you were doing, I guess, down there for to some extent, Scott. <clears throat> and it, it's into the uh, not so much the college part, but sort of the life experiences, right? You lived in and around DC for what, like almost 10 years or something, if you conclude college and then 14, 14 years. Okay. So I, I match with people and I've told you this about Bumble. And by the way, if we get time at the end of the show, I have a I have a, a very like breaking news Bumble story that we can get to at the end of the show if I, if we have time. Um, if not, we'll breaking just... news Dan. No, Bumble not Bumble. No. It's not breaking news the... Bumble. Breaking news Bumble is that they're going to go public. That's breaking news. Bumble. I know. Breaking I know. And they're going to go. You have is not Bumble breaking news. But... Okay, first of all, breaking news Bumble. And also, if this got out, and if this does get out, like people share this video or whatever, that could really screw up their their stock thing. I mean, it really could, because it's like a huge hack that I found. Anyway, we'll tease that for the end. Let, let, let's get back to the point that I'm making. I matched with a lot of people. And uh, the other day, I matched with, now this is the second woman in about a month and a half span, who is native Ecuadorian. She lives in New Jersey now. She lives down the shore. She lived in California for a while and I'm looking at her profile and it doesn't really say that much. She's not one of those like braggadocious people who are like, Oh, 38 continents and seven countries, whatever. I know it's the other way around, but like, you know, and, and counting like people who just like put on their, on their dating profile, like how jet setting they've been in their lives. Like that's real life. Um, she didn't do that, but her English was relatively um, choppy when we were texting back and forth. I was like, you're not from New Jersey originally. She said, no, I'm from Ecuador. And, then I realized, Scott, when I have to talk to people about where I've lived my whole life, I've never lived outside of New Jersey. Ever. Brutal. Brutal. I mean, like, even my ex, like, she lived in New Jersey her whole life, but then, like, went to California for a year and, like, taught, taught in a university out there, a college out there, a university, and had that experience. 
I've lived all around the state of New Jersey. Like I've lived in many different towns, but like, and it's just so. You live near the shore. You I did. live near the city. I did. I lived in all those places. You lived no, the on joke a farm. Is, I didn't live on a farm. The joke is that in New Jersey, that like you're 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 an hour away from everything. Like literally, in anywhere in New Jersey, you're an hour away from everything. You're an hour away from a major city. You're an hour away from the ocean. So you do have a lot here. But now that I've like expanded my horizons, if I was going to a bar every night trying to pick up some random woman, they're also from New Jersey, right? Like most of them, some of them move here for work or whatever. But it's like embarrassing for me. And like, I'm not going to lie and be like, oh, I've been to, I've never even been off the continent. I took five years of French and, and then took French in college. Never been to France. I, I've never been to England. I watched 40 soccer matches a, a weekend. What, where, what, what happened? We left you behind, dude. It's actually, actually really sad because, you know, I know, I know. I'm you sad. Know that I, took, I mean, hey, that's sad. Just that you're stuck in New Jersey because uh, it's, it's okay, but there's so many other places. Uh, B, I think you know this, like, I don't know how many years ago this was. Me, I want to say know, maybe six years ago, seven years ago, that I took Paul with us backpacking through Europe. <laughs> oh, I know. You were single at the time, right? That that was like your first big yeah, trip yeah, with yeah. the kids. Wait, what? Was that your first big trip with the kids as a single dad? No, no. We went to we went to Hawaii and oh, okay. California prior to doing that. Like. Like we went on a cruise, which was my first trip with them. And that was manageable because it was just me. We went to Hawaii and, and California uh, as a test run, I would say. It was a great trip, but as a test run to see, are they capable of dealing with like a lot of countries, different languages, et cetera, and just long trips. And and sure, I thought they sure. were, and they did, they did amazing. And so it was my two kids and my third kid, Paul. I, yeah, I was married at the time and certainly not going to jet set away with you. But now that, that this is the first year uh, that I have been single and COVID sort of put the kibosh on any long travel. I mean, you could do it, but who really wants to at this point other than you going to Miami on a whim that uh, that I, I my, my goal is to take them um, to England. I want to do the Liverpool, um, maybe Manchester and London trip where we can see like all the Beatles stuff, go see Everton play, maybe Liverpool play, go down and watch Chelsea play and like combine it with soccer stuff. I, that's what I want to do. Well, you can't do it now. Cause even if we were able to fly to England, there, nobody's allowed in the stadiums. So I feel like this year where I was like, Oh, I had spring break this year. Right. That was my holiday. We sat in the freaking apartment because we weren't yeah. even allowed to go to the park. And so this yeah. year put, put a lot of damper on people's trips and plans but I want to throw that out as a personal thing, Dan at divorcedadplaybook.com. Now, you've had these opportunities. And I'm sitting here talking to this woman from Ecuador who invited me, by the way, after, you know, 20 minutes. So take that for what it's worth. She invited me to go to Ecuador with her. She's like, well, once we're allowed to go anywhere, she's like, come down. I'm like, done. I don't even know if I have a passport anymore. Done. Um, you don't know if you have like a passport? <laughs> I mean, I have one. I went to Mexico, but like, I don't know where it is. I think my ex probably still has it. I, I do not know oh, where wait, my passport is. So you've is. been, you've been outside of New Jersey then. And the, oh, the, no, the continent. Oh, you mean Mexico, the con Okay, gotcha. Like North America. I've been to Canada been to like, like a Island thousand times. Anything? Hawaii, never... but that's part of the United States. That's part of North America. Right, but you were like the four. Oh, I, all right. So fine. I was on a cruise and I went to the Bahamas and we parked in like right. the Bahamas. Okay. All right. So technically, I was off continent. It's really clear that, that you've actually been outside of the continent. Okay, that's fair. I did not think I did not count a cruise, which is like an American cruise ship that left from Philadelphia. I didn't even have to fly somewhere to the cruise. I just hopped on a boat, and all of a sudden, I'm like, you know, hanging out. So, so fine. Yes, once I was off the continent. Thanks yeah. for making me feel a lot better. You're welcome. Where's the furthest that you've matched with? Yeah, let's just keep it to the recent because I know you're. You're back in the mix. Like, ha have you ever matched with somebody? No, I don't mean distance, like from you to them. I mean, just like somebody from a, a, a place. Like, have you, has anyone ever been like, oh, I'm from the Netherlands. Like, let's go get Dutch. Oh, well, I actually. Would um, you pay for that or would, they, would you split it? We'll get to those questions later. I think I'd probably no. pay, but, but yeah. You uh, get it because I, I said the Netherlands, you guys would be going Dutch on the trip. Oh, yeah. sometimes, <laughs> you sometimes your humor just like goes right by me. Uh, I actually matched with a woman, interestingly enough, this was not so long ago, uh, matched with a woman who was 
fishing in the New York City pond. But when you read her, and it was a very well put together profile, when you read it, she disclaimed that I'm not actually in New York City. I live in Bermuda. Damn. And so I was, uh, so I was just curious, like, was what, she on travel that... mode, or did she just like no, gamed the system? No, no, she wasn't gaming the system. She was being honest about it. She, but, but clearly, there's like half a dozen people on Bermuda that are there all the time. So she has to kind of lo- look in a major city that would be easy to get back and forth to Bermuda, which it is very easy. It's like an hour and a half to get to to Bermuda. Less time to get to okay. Bermuda than it would be for me to get into the city commuting sometimes. Uh, so, so it, funny? Was, it takes less time to get to the airport than from the airport to another country. Like it always happens. Right. Yeah, or more true. time to get to the airport. Yeah. Yeah. So, so imagine somebody from Bermuda and yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I wish her the best of luck. Uh, she's looking for something very specific. And, and she told me like, I, I said, well, are you down there temporarily just to ride out the pandemic or what's going on? She's like, no, no, no. I live here. Uh, and my two kids and their significant others stay in houses on the family compound. And I was like, Damn. oh, well, maybe you're paying. Uh, and, and and it just, yeah, you're not going so Dutch batch, we, we, we connected a little bit. And then I was like, I, I just, I don't know how this works for anybody, to be honest with you. I was like, maybe that's why you're on a dating site, you know, searching for somebody. I don't know how you're going to find somebody on a dating site who's going to all of a sudden pick up and move to Bermuda. I'll tell you what, Scott, it's amazing to me. And, and, and as you pointed out, like Bermuda is a flight. You get on a plane, you're there in an hour and a half, right? I cannot tell you, I would say, well, I can tell you probably 10 a week, at least people who on different apps, usually Bumble match with me who are at least two, three States away. We played, I think it was, might've been the last episode that we had the woman from Ohio who like wanted to hook up and then got mad at me. Cause like go find yeah. a whore in New Jersey or something, but that happens all the time. I, I, and I get tricked into it every time yesterday. I was like, wow, this woman's amazing. Oh, right. She's not going to be. And I scroll down and it's like a birthday present when they're from near here. When somebody comes to match with me and I'm like, oh my God, she lives only 40 miles away. Like that's still going to be a far trip, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting like uh, New Hampshire. And it's interesting to me how willing people, what lengths literally and figuratively people are willing to go to, to find love. And to find, is it, is it a desperation thing? thing? Is that? No, no, it's not a desperation thing. I actually, over well, time, learn me. I, I agree with this actually. I think and I happened to do a little experiment when I was down in Miami because I met a bunch of people who were single kind of together uh, for, from a city. And if you're from a major city, uh, you, you are going to look within that major city to find somebody, right or wrong. And I think right now it's wrong because a lot of people have left the major cities because of COVID and are now kind of scattered all about. So maybe people are thinking about dating in a different way. But I truly believe what what's the, what are the chances look i wasn't even supposed to be in new york as far as i'm concerned i'm here because of my children and because of my ex like we came out to new york family is from here i don't think i'm supposed to be here i still think i probably was meant to be in dc and and maryland etc uh but i'm here so so what are the odds and what are the chances that i'm gonna find my next person within 25 miles of the house that I'm not supposed to be living in. It's just, it's just so, so random. So I think, I think, especially coming from a city where I legitimately spent three hours a day round trip commuting in and out of the city, I'm used to traveling. Why would I not travel 50, 60 miles to meet somebody who could be the best partner? I know in my area where I am, if I'm, if I meet people over in Connecticut, I, like on the coast, like I gotta give it a shot. Like if, if I'm serious about it, look, if you're just looking to hook up, I don't think you go 70 miles. I think if you're looking for somebody who who could be a partner for you, a law, an LTR, I think you have to open it up. I think you could go hundred miles. I think you can meet in between. I think once you get to know each other, you can spend the weekend at your house, at her house, at his house, whatever it might be. And I think, it's worth it. I do. I think it's worth it. I think you can't be confined by these rules that the dating apps put in to affect that it seems like, oh my God, 40 okay, miles you, is so far. It's not. You bring up an interesting point, and, and that's a lot. There's a lot to unpack there. I say that jokingly. First, talking about distance, there's a woman who I matched with south of Richmond, right? So pretty south Virginia. 
and um she matched she tried to match with me and i was like this woman is amazing and i was you know so we've stayed in contact and we text each other you know a couple times a week or whatever at 12 14 a.m i got a text from her last night that said is this your brother yikes and look who was on her screen look who she could match with on bumble it's smiling scott levy yeah i was like yes how did you see that and she has yet to respond so i will update the show if uh, if that comes up how about that so now it's the second person that she didn't match with you but second person who has now you know been in both of our ecosystems because she clearly doesn't care about distance she's matched with me and you know we've talked about hanging out once whatever um but scott to your point and i understand what you're saying and and you're looking at it as a, at a very different um you look at it probably similar to how most people go about the dating process, which is there's someone out there for me, right? I think all these apps that we talk about and all these games and stuff, they're all trying to build you up into like, there's this perfect person out there. And if you've already had a person, maybe that wasn't your person, or maybe it was your person for 20 years or 10 years, and there's another person out there for you. And it's really interesting how romanticized people get. Now I'm still jaded. I've got divorced a year ago almost exactly like if you look at the clock it's like pretty much um you're now almost nine years eight years beyond you're in that romantic phase you're gonna you're, you're willing to go where the love is for you but i look at it and i'm like dude you're next to you're, you're 45 minutes or whatever an hour from the biggest city on the continent one of the four biggest cities on the planet you're an hour and a half away from philadelphia which is the fourth biggest market maybe fifth if you include all the sprawl of phoenix in the country you have probably, and I'm not even joking, 4 million possibilities on these dating apps within an hour and a half of you. Why in the world would you need to find somebody in Connecticut or Virginia or somewhere else? Because you're, you're on the search for the perfect person. You're not on the search for one of these people has to be a really good fit for me. Yes. However, a few quick things. I'm not going to Virginia. Connecticut is actually in the metro area of new york it's probably so, right. parts of connecticut are closer that. to you than philly fine yes although probably not that much closer like there are there are the northern parts of philly are probably relatively close as close as connecticut is I, I would not be going to virginia so I, I i don't know if she's gonna match with me but that won't work um so so uh I, but i do think and 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 i use this often especially lately as people talk about this and this is a momism, you know. I love these little mom phrases that she's doted on me. Uh, there's a lid for every pot, and there might be more than one lid for every pot, but there's a lid for every pot. And I think that you get to a certain point in your life where you you want your lid, and and it might not be in you know in close proximity. I'm not saying I'm going to, you know, I don't match with people in Boston, which is also another major city. I don't match with people and things. I agree that there's a lot of people in our general area, but I'm just seeing a lot of people, especially pre COVID were like, I'm not going outside of Manhattan. Maybe I'll go to Brooklyn. Like that's what they would say. Now half of Manhattan is gone. So if you're not willing to go to long Island and go 40 miles to, go, to meet somebody, you might not find that person you're looking for. If you're not willing to go to Connecticut, you're not willing to go to Westchester. You're not willing to go to Philly. You're not going willing to go to, you know, the suburbs of right. New Jersey, you may not, you may miss out on the person that you're really looking to find. Look, I agree with that. And, and again, I, I think um, I've had this conversation a lot recently, case in point. Um, I told you, I, I actually drove twice an hour, uh, once on Friday and then once on Saturday for two different dates. I don't mind the drive. It's not that far. And the woman I went out with on Saturday, she was great, really nice. We had a really, really good time. And I almost fell asleep on the highway on the way home because we hung out until like one in the morning and then i got a coffee and i was still like it was just too far of a drive it was just too, there there were windy roads for the first 15 miles i had to worry about deer and then i get on the major highway i'm on 95 and 295 for people who are near us and know those roads and i'm like dozing off and that hasn't happened for me in like 20 years like I, i'm i'm usually pretty wired after a, a day and so i said that to her i was like look this is just too far i was like we can do something casual like if you want to hang out every once in a while but like i can't be doing this every weekend I just can't. It's just too far. And so to your point, Scott, yes, it's how, how, how willing are, you know, are you to make that distance? It depends on the person, but it also sort of depends on the logistics of it. And 
Sometimes when you have two kids, when you only have two days a week where you're available to hang out, unless you have, uh, you know, the same weekend as this other woman. Now, this woman who I'm mentioning now does not have children. So she is a little bit more free. She came to hang out here the following day. So she didn't mind the drive. Right. But if you don't have that, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter. The case in point, if, you, if people are watching on YouTube and you saw me look down at my phone a couple of times, I'm getting texts from a woman. No joke. She's amazing. I like I'm dying to hang out with this woman she lives two miles from me like she texted me last night and she's like oh crap we, we're on opposite weekends and i'm like lady it's 8 38 i could run to your place by nine <laughs> like you're two miles away and yet because we weren't on the same weekends her point was like we're never going to get to do anything it's, it's amazing how proximity and, and and schedules matter and so to have to drive that hour is is prohibitive sometimes or or you can't seem to get together with somebody who's two miles away from you because of schedules so we match this weekend we're gonna get it. together don't get me wrong i understand but i'm just saying it's not always the case so you felt the need i'm to not break. worried i'm not worried um it, it it's just the reality is if you find somebody who lives a little bit further away and they feel the same way that you do about it that they can't be confined to just searching for dudes that live within 15 minutes of their house they got to look a little bit further you got to look a little bit further and you have to compromise and sometimes that's what it's going to be if you have if you have similar schedules right. and there's two days a week that you can hang out one day you go to her house she, the, the 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 other day she comes to yours or you know to your area and i think that if you're if you're serious and the other person is serious you you make that work and i think that that's okay and i've done that before and i'll do it again i think that that's that I don't want to, I don't want to be confined to just the people who happen to be so close to the area that no, I no, happen no. to find a house in. That you know, that's definitely where my person is going to be. I can't do. I like think that. you're I dealing. I think you're people. dealing with a little bit more of an existential crisis as to where you are geographically than most other people that are listening to this. I think most other people are settled in a general area. Now, maybe to your point, they get divorced and they feel like, "What the f am I doing here? I, I don't belong here. I'm an outsider." That's how you felt for a long time. So I feel, I feel like a lot of what you're dealing with is not necessarily what most people. I, I got divorced, and my big thing was I, I wanted to be in the same town as my kids, because I didn't want my kids going to school or going to meet someone. And they say, "Where do you live?" And they say, um, "Well, we live in fill in the blank town, and our dad lives in fill in the blank town over." I wanted to say, "We live in," and it's the same town. So that was important to me. Now that might not be forever. You know, when I buy a house or whatever we end up doing, like that could be in a different town. I'm not saying I'm definitely going to stay in this town forever. Yeah. But I do think people are more, more comfortable I, settling than it feels like you are. I, I understand. And, and I don't mean to make it seem like, like my situation is for everybody. But what I will say is plenty of people, right. Plenty of people who go through divorce. Of course, I did the same exact thing, Dan. Like I stayed in the town that my kids were in school right. to make sure they were okay with school and make sure everything was settled. And then I moved one town over because it was a train town. So I've done the same thing. All I'm saying is that ultimately, as you get to the point where I am, and a lot of people are listening, know we're here and are, and are thinking about it, that should you stay in the town? Like this is not like when we grew up anymore. The world, just because you haven't really been outside of New Jersey, does not mean that the world isn't more open, COVID aside, that people want to explore and expand their horizons. So I talk to plenty of people who are like, look, when my kids go to college, so when when my when that responsibility is is up, I, I'm gonna stay yeah. where I'm gonna stay so they can finish school. When my kids go to college, I may want to stay here. I may want to stay here. I might want to get a townhouse or an apartment. Uh, and, and, but I might also want to be somewhere else. I might want to, I want, might want a house at the beach or, or a place at the beach. I might want a house or a place somewhere else too, that I can kind of split time if my job allows it to work that way. And, and so I do let's, think that a lot of people can, can relate to that at least. That's fair. And, and let's spin this back to a little bit about what we're doing. And, and, and the, cause this, I, I think I spent a large part of the weekend, not just on these dates, which is always funny to like talk to your date about dating apps and like everyone's like what do you do and it's like well i'm you know building a, a thing with our team to help people with their dating app and help people like find love and they're like you're on a date with me what the hell are you doing that for and so it's funny because even people who i'm with by the end of the date they went from at the beginning like well i don't need help to like oh my god this is overwhelming i literally had somebody say to me i am having like a panic attack with how much 
that this is about. Like, I thought my profile was good and now I'm freaking out. And I'm like, don't freak out. Just let me help you. Let us help you. And that's sort of what we're doing. Uh, for more information for that, it's, it's going to be coming. But if people want to jump at the beginning of the line, you know, just just text us or email us or whatever you do. Um, Dan at DivorcedDadPlaybook.com for people who are hopping in the middle and Scott at DivorcedDadPlaybook.com. This, this is an awesome thing that we're doing and we're getting really close to, to launching this, Scott. So I think it's cool. But I wanted to bring that up because one thing that I find super overwhelming for people and, and myself included is when, when you expanded your range, right? I started out 20 miles was my range because I have a major city, which is between nine and 16 miles from me. The entire city is within 16 miles of me. But then I realized it'll take me half that time to drive 38 miles down to like Wilmington, Delaware. So it, like, how is it closer for me to get to Wilmington than like West Philly? It doesn't make simple traffic and you know, tolls and stuff. So I expanded to 40 miles, but what happened to me, Scott, is I expanded to the distance, but I didn't constrain my age bracket. And so now I have four times the number of people and it's overwhelming because I feel like I can't find anyone. Yeah. And what I realized is, and I said this to somebody this weekend, those can change. One day, if you're looking, you know, just for somebody who's more local, expand your age range, but keep your distance tight. So let's look for somebody, I'm 42, I'm gonna be 43 in a week. So let's figure out somebody from 30 to 55, whatever. What, what's funny about that? I didn't say anything. Why are you laughing? Why are you looking at me and saying that I was laughing? Because I said 30 and you started laughing. No, I, I was laughing that it's your birthday coming up and you'd be 43. That's what I was laughing. Spoiler about. alert, 30 was, anyway, this weekend I, I like hung out with a person who's 30. It was like the greatest like old man feeling in the world. It was like amazing. Like you just feel like, oh my God. Um, you, feel like an old, you feel like an old man. <laughs> like, yeah, I do. I, yeah, anyway. Like I've had a kid longer than the distance of age between us. Anyway, um, but but the point is, and so I'm willing to expand my my distance parameters. And, and this is really important for people who are out there dating and they're like overwhelmed by this. There, there's two big things. Distance and age can expand your, your pool, your talent pool or whatever. So if you're going to spread your age out and make it like a 15 to 20 year, whatever, then tighten up your distance because you're going to get more people in there and it's going to be overwhelming because you're like, why are there so many people I don't like? You get like mad at other people for existing. Like, come on, where are the people I like? Why are those people not compatible with me? Well, you're not doing your search right. And then when you're willing, to your point, Scott, when you're willing to look further out, how many times have you met somebody who's eight to 10 years younger than you and you're like, you second guess it afterwards. Sometimes it works. Most of the time you're like, yeah, we're just too far apart. But if you're going to expand your distance to 50, 60 miles, tighten that age group up yeah. because yeah. you'll find better matches for yourself. And it's just a simple tip that I keep telling people, don't get overwhelmed by the sheer volume. They want you to be wowed by the number of people on these apps. And, right. and that's part of the game. Well, it, it, I go through this a lot and, and everyone's heard me talk about this. And now you're finally, I think at the beginning, you didn't understand what I meant necessarily when I said these apps are really gamified. Oh, you're uh, right. You're but, right. Now, but, now, but now you're starting to get it. And I hope people listening and, and I hope that people who are really going to be helping are going to understand the game of it. And I think that that's right. Uh, I, I actually, I remember this a couple of weeks ago when I first, Paul Newman, when I first got back on the TV episode, you, I, I, I matched with my old ex, which I think is funny anyway. Uh, but she's not actively dating. You matched with her, dating. or she came up on your no, 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 she came up. Sorry, sorry, she okay, came that's up different. That's a big option. difference, okay. right? No, 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 right. I agree, but I think that that's part of the deal. Like when you go on there, what was interesting, like if I didn't know her, and I do. <laughs> Uh, I would have seen her profile come up, which is very well put together. And I would have been like, oh, definitely. Right. And I would have, had I not known the history behind her and me and, and all that other stuff, I probably would have gotten myself excited about the potential. And then annoyed when she never gets back her, to you, like what's wrong with me? And then annoyed when she gets back. Yep. But, right. 
And, and so, so it, it, it Fs there. with you, it Fs with you, you know, and, and for anyone who's on these apps too much, if you don't stay a little bit busy, it really messes with you because you're like, wait, I'm matching with all these people that I think are the right people for me. Why are they not matching back? Well, they're not matching back for a lot of reasons. One, most importantly, being that they're not they're actually not active. They're not there. So, so they may have liked you. If you've been on the apps for a while, they may have liked you a year or two ago and thus they came into your mix and so you'll even if you're on bumble as an example they'll even be in your highlighted yellow like hey you matched with them and then they never respond and you could extend you could do whatever you want they're never going to respond because they're not actively on the app but at one point in time they match with you and the and then you match with them and it, that's when it starts and they match with them and that's what comes up so right that's the gamification of it and i think that you need you need to be really careful about this because it will really mess with you. And as we come it does up mess on, with right. And if you, and as we come up on a very, the next holiday, America, the next holiday to come up and it's President's in all the stores day? right now. Groundhog day, groundhog day. It makes sense. Cause if you're scared of the woman, you just, you go back in and it's winter for six more weeks. Obviously there's hearts abound and it's legitimately one of the worst holidays ever when you're single. I know. Cause punks, Tony Phil can't even talk and they pretend like he talks. I mean, this is like a ridiculous holiday. Oh, you're talking about Valentine's Day. Sorry, Thank that doesn't you. exist for Thank me anymore. You. Valentine's Day right. no longer exists. Well, 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 but that's my point. So it doesn't exist for a lot of people, yet it's for all of these people. And it's a really, really tough time. So I have, when I've not been with somebody on Valentine's Day over the past eight years, some years I have, some years I haven't, uh, I spend that time figuring out what I want and narrowing my my search so i think this is a good topic to talk about now and probably for the next sure. few weeks that that what you're saying dan is to narrow your focus and and don't don't get overwhelmed and don't let the apps mess with you etc this is the time that i usually spend to to focus in on what i'm really looking for because i realize like oh my god another valentine's day is coming by you know not that i'm not that i need it to be a valentine's day but it's just a reminder of i i don't have love except for my kids and i need to figure that out and and my brother i was like what the hell is this i put up with your no, shit every day I, no well, I, I think I, if, there's, if there's not if that's not love I, um, I, I love you yes but I, I feel like i've been i feel like i've been giving away a lot of our tips but these are free and, the, and for people who are listening you deserve it because you're loyal listeners one other tip to combat the like why isn't this woman written back to me why isn't this woman written back to me um, yesterday I was on hinge. I I've had a woman who I think is catfishing me for six months. She's, I mean, I'm not, I don't, all, all due respect to every other woman I matched with. She's the most attractive woman I've ever seen in my entire life. And we matched and we talked back and forth and then she disappeared. But is on it me. a real woman? Well, is we talked, hold on. We talked and then we went back and then she disappeared on me. So I thought, well, she's catfishing me. So every once in a while, like every couple of weeks, I would send a message on Bumble and be like, you're not real. And then she would like laugh and then send me a note back. And it was really funny. Well, she ended up on hinge. And I sent a note last night and I'm like, look, uh, we've enjoyed this back and forth. I don't even know if she's enjoyed it at all. I was like, we've enjoyed this back and forth we've shared over, but like, I'm a great first date. You should hang out with me. And, and, I'm, and I will be devastated if she never writes me back. Meanwhile, she may never be on the app. That, that could be like an old profile. She could be married for all I know and just like placating me. Right. right. And, and to that point, here's the pro tip. I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago that the first woman I went on a date with when I first got single, I follow her on Instagram and all of her Instagram photos now are either pictures of her and her kids or pictures of her and this guy that they're like very in love. And I'm super happy for her. It's amazing. Like I'm really, it's, it, it shows me that these things can work, right. That apps like this right. can work. And thank right. goodness to her that she got out, out of my orbit as quickly as she did. Um, <laughs> but whenever you see someone have their Instagram in their profile, whether it's linked at the bottom or whether they put their Instagram in the, um, in their actual bio, click on it, go over to Instagram before you match with the person, because two things can happen. One, you can see what they look like and see if that's the same photos, if they haven't updated their profile Two, sometimes they haven't updated their Instagram in like 30 weeks or 40 weeks. And so, you know, they're not updating their dating profile because it's linked to something that they don't even use anymore. And so make sure that you get all of the information you can before you waste time pining over someone who is never going to respond to you. It's just a quick yeah. thing that, that is really, yeah. really helpful. Um, yeah. before we finish, Scott, I want to just two things. Uh, one, I want to touch on something that you did this weekend, which is interesting data. And then I want to get to this, if you don't mind, cause we're talking about Bumble and how you can sort of game the system a little bit. Um, 
Oh, I gamed it. I very much gamed it. So I'll get to that. But before that, Scott, you actually talked to this group that you mentioned that you saw in Miami. Yeah. And I, I wanted to call this up because we, we did a little survey with them and had some data. You're willing to travel pretty far. Now, these people all, you said they all live in a major city or near yep. a major city. Yes, correct. Okay. 67% of the people who you talk to would be willing to travel within 20 miles of where they are to find a yeah. match. Yeah. Only 16 or almost 17% were willing to travel 30 miles, 10 more miles and 40 miles, 3%. None of the people you spoke to 17%, none of the people you spoke to were willing to drive more than 40 miles or travel. I shouldn't say drive, travel more than 40 miles yeah. to find a match. Yeah. That, that, I find that very interesting because you're atypical. Well, it's not interesting because because that happens to be it's not interesting because i know because i know who i talk to i know what the study that that that's a skewed result simply because these are people the majority of them don't even own cars they live in a major city they they get around through uber or subways and they just you know there are people who are in brooklyn will maybe go to manhattan to hook up or they're in manhattan maybe go to brooklyn but if a lot of our if a lot of our listeners but, are in or near major cities like i mean a lot of our listeners are in that same boat where they either don't have cars or they rely on public transportation no i i understand and and so so the, the conversation that i had with them that's not going to show up in the in the study is that they know that a lot of people have left the major cities so they're left with the with the scraps basically which is why they're having trouble finding love but the reality is there are a lot of people who are probably better matches for them that are living now uh in a in a second home or have kind of like left the city and are sure. 40 50 miles away um, but still city people like I still consider myself to be a city person I could easily get in and out of the city and and I and I did a lot of stuff in the city and I would easily be able to meet somebody in the city if I matched somebody in Long Island I would not necessarily be thrilled about going out to Long Island but meeting that person in the city no problem it's easy I'm in the suburb of the city so I think that those results are a little bit skewed because I think that they just all fair. had this assumption that people were going to come back into the city to meet with them all right, that's fair. So l let me let me move to this, and, and I'm sure you can see this right now. This is the back end of my Bumble profile. <clears throat> no, I'll explain this pretty quickly for people who are watching on YouTube. It's a lot easier. Um, so if you're listening, I'll do my best to explain this. Um, I was asked by someone who I care very deeply about to add my pronouns to my Instagram, and I thought, well, I might as well do it on my dating profile as well because everyone should put their pronouns. By the way, just personal thing, put your pronouns, whether it's he, she, they, whatever you want put them in because it, it normalizes it for everyone else. And I think that's the right thing to do. What I decided to do was take it one step further on Bumble. You have about 50 different things on Bumble, Scott, that you're able to, um, you're able to change your gender to. Now you can only change it twice on Bumble. So whatever you picked originally, and then you have two times to change your gender. So I decided to change from just man to cisgender man, which just means man. It's just the same thing. And cisgender for people who don't know, all it basically means is, you are the gender you were born as. That's cisgender. Gotcha. They have very, they have too many options. Let's put it this way. They're trying to overcompensate. They're trying to over accommodate people. And yet for people who are looking on my screen, once I did the cisgender man thing, if you see all of a sudden show me in searches for popped up and now I can press men or women. That's a very confusing question for me because I couldn't tell if it was show me in searches for when people are searching for men or show me in searches for women who are doing searches. Like I wanna show up in women's searches. So show right. me in searches for yeah. women. That's confusing, well, I agree. It's very confusing. So what happened was, now uh, remember, you can only change your gender three times, twice after you do it the first time. But this show me in searches for, you can toggle back and forth all you want. And I accidentally had it on women because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. And so I clicked it to women, which I just did for people who are watching. And I went back to my profile and lo and behold, I have the ability to now write messages to women I have yet to correspond. Just by clicking that one button and I'll show people how serious I am about this. Cause if you go back to my basic info for people who are watching and I click back to men and I go back to that same person, I no longer have the ability to match with them. Now, Scott, I didn't change my gender. My gender has been man since the day I started on Bumble. 
But because I tried to be more inclusive and I picked cisgender man, their system allows me to pretend essentially to be a woman. I can now go do whatever I want. I can rematch with people. I can match with women. I can now contact them. That is a problem because by clicking one tiny thing, you're not lying. You're not doing what they said. You can only change your gender twice. Clicking one button, Scott, I can get through the entire point of Bumble is that the women have, it's Sadie Hawkins. The women have to make contact first. One click of a button and yeah. I have access to that. That's well, technology. It's the holy grail. You know, wait, 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 wait. There's one other thing before you get off this. Scroll, yeah. scroll back up or, or, you know, like, yeah. Okay, hold on. Wait. So this is really interesting because one of the things that I, with this little focus group I had going. Oh, was you're all doing education? Was, you son no, of no, 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 oh, Well, okay. well I, I was not going to make fun of you until you pointed that out, but I was not going to do that. I was actually going to specifically talk about height for a second because, oh, okay, okay. because all the women, all that I happen to talk to were very specific about heights and had a real issue with height. So my question is, are, are you 6'1", by the way? I'm, I might be 6'2". I'm legit 6'1". I You're might not 6'2". My driver's license says... Hold on. My driver's yeah, license says 6'2". You put that on yourself. You put I know. that on yourself. When, That'll measure you. When I have shoes on and I like my hair was spiky at the time, I was legit 6'2". I, I was nervous that I was lying to people for years, and I measured myself about two years ago, and I was legit 6'1", like maybe a little taller. Okay, because again, so I asked this question because I'm, I'm like 6'2", but like really to your point if my hair is a little spiky and i have bigger shoes on i could be like six two and a half um if not i'm like six one and three quarters like whatever but but what they all said was they're like guys that are shorter will lie they're like they basically think if you're putting your five nine you're adding two inches to it yeah so it's very interesting the way that people go about this so height was one of the things education will save for another time buddy yeah, I, I just don't, well, I don't deal, I don't deal with it because if you look and we'll, we'll tell this up, you, high school, trade or tech school, in college, undergraduate degree, grad school or graduate degree. Bumble doesn't even offer the some college, which a lot of people do offer. Like, so I actually had by accident one time in college and people were texting me and they're like, you're in college? And I'm like, no, well, that's what your profile says. And I was like, yikes, my bad. Yeah. So I, th none of those pertain yeah. to me. None of those options pertain. But, that's why I don't have it. Cause I like, I'm right. very open about the fact right. that I didn't graduate and why, I mean, let's, I'm not hiding it. No, no, I understand. But again, I think we've just started to point out all the things, if you're being yeah. thoughtful about your profile, all the things that could matter. And the last Definitely. thing that I would say is well, I, before you do, well, 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 I, I'll, 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 I'll save, I'll save what else I got from these people. Cause it was, it was great. Well, no, I want to show you, I want to, cause I have the data right here and I want to share that with you. What I found very interesting, Scott is of the people you talk to and some of them were men, 72% of them said height is extremely important. Five out of five on the importance. Extremely important. You said to your point, like mostly women thought that the height was important. All women, the men didn't care. And yet only 56% of them gave a five out of five to how important is someone's political beliefs. It is more important for women that you're tall than that you're a Trump supporter. <laughs> That's the well, I think that I, th I think the timing of this, this happened this past weekend or this past week. And I think that, that the Trump ship has sailed. And I think that that has now become, oh, you think less people are now topic. opening up to interest. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it was. I, I think in all reality, that's what it was. So I don't think that, they're that they think it's that height's more important than political beliefs, but it, it is important. It's, it's critical and you can't do anything about that. So, you know, it is what it is, but there was a lot of data, a lot of information, which we'll continue to share. I think that it was really, really uh, interesting to me and to us for what we're trying to do for people to be able to talk to others that are in this same pool as all of us. And, and I think it was a nice opportunity. Just a reminder for was around those people. Just a reminder for the audience, where, where did you talk to these people? Oh, right. I wish I was still there, dude. The snow sucks. Oh, well, it's all you. I'm just, I'll, I'm I'll say it. You can keep the Miami thing going. I was really sad to leave and to come back to snow and ice and everything was brutal. It was really mentally messing with me a little bit. Um, but 
I came back to see my kids, and that's why I do what I do. So, kids, kids first.